Watch us take my Red Bull TKO Suron from Frankenstein to 125cc competitor. Brian from Charge Cycle Works. Today we're going to be talking about my personal bike. This is the bike I rode at the Red Bull TKO race out in Tennessee and you'll notice it's got a KTM 85 air fork on it. Some of you might know that already and some of you might not. It's been a while since we've made a video about this bike and a lot has changed since then. Um, the last videos we shot it was running a Dorado fork up front uh, both the expert and the pro it had 1821 gold excel wheels on it and you'll notice that that's very different from where this spike is today so one of the projects we wanted to do this year was a, an 85 front end uh, i wanted to do specifically the ktm front end off the new gen bike because it's an air fork which means it's a lot lighter than your other yamaha and kawasaki 85 cc fork so that's what we did to this bike uh, we haven't made a video since then other than some of the uh, Red Bull TKO content you might have seen. So what I wanted to do with this is talk about uh, what this bike is like uh, and then what we're going to do to this bike for 2023 and, and what our goals are with this bike. So originally I wanted to run an EBMX extended swing arm on this bike before Red Bull TKO but we ran out of time. Uh, I still have the stock swing arm. One of the problems I had, the very first ride on this bike did not go very well. Um, the front forks on these KTMs are three inches longer than your mountain bike forks. So that raised my front end up by three whole inches. Um, that causes a lot of problems and basically the problem I was experiencing with that is the bike wanders all over the trail. It doesn't want to turn. Um, the front end washes out. Uh, those are kind of some of the symptoms when you raise your front end too high. All right, so some things I had to do to this bike to get it to work properly. So I had to suck up the forks inside the triple clamps, which meant going to a 19-inch front. This is a uh, front wheel off of a KTM. It is not a Suron because the brakes, the wheel, everything is KTM up front on this bike. Now with that 19 up front, I had to raise the rear end of this bike significantly, and that's why I didn't put the EBMX swing arm on it. I needed to run an inch and a half linkage to raise the rear end one and a half inches to help it compensate for these long forks. Um, and that's where we ran out of time and why I didn't put the EBMX swing arm on there. Now by doing all of this, the geometry is close, but it's not perfect. The bike is still a little bit nose high, it still doesn't quite turn with the steering precision that I want it to turn with. Uh, but don't get me wrong, this bike is awesome. But we're going to make it even more awesome. We are going to build the biggest, baddest, fastest Suron capable of competing against a 125cc motocross bike. Get that out of here. All right, we have three goals with this bike. Number one, get this question all the time. I think Nate has asked me this question at least a thousand times. Why isn't there a 21 inch tire on this gigantic KTM fork? So that's one goal, getting a 21 inch on here. All right, goal number two. If you've watched any of the Red Bull TKO content, not just from us, but from others, you'll know that every single Suron at that race overheated. Um, I overheated, Nate overheated, Brett overheated, we all overheated multiple times during that race. And that was really unfortunate because I'm confident Brett could have walked away with that race if he had not overheated multiple times. So that's goal number two, solve the overheating issues with the power outputs on this bike. Goal number three, I've already talked about this a little bit, it's the geometry, it's the handling of the bike. The front end is tall because of this long fork. We've got to raise the rear end up. So goal number three is just general handling and chassis geometry improvements to make this KTM fork work the way we want it to work. 
So why couldn't I run a 21 inch wheel with this big KTM fork? I mean, it's longer, right? So you should be able to fit a 21 inch, no problem. The problem is I had to lower the front end of the fork, which means I had to raise the forks up until they hit the handlebars um, to lower the front end. When I did that, I lost the clearance needed for the suspension travel and a 21 inch. Uh, if I ran a 21 inch up front on this bike right now and hit a big jump, the tire would probably contact the triple clamp and I would endo over the handlebars. Don't want that to happen, that's no fun. In order for me to fit a 21 inch on this fork, I've got to lower the fork again, which means I've got to raise the rear end significantly, hopefully an inch and a half. And this is how we're going to do that. I'm sure you guys have seen this before in some of our other videos. This is the EBMX extended swing arm. By installing this on my bike, I'll gain about one inch of additional rear height. So that's going to be part of the solution. Another way we're going to raise the rear end is through a different tire selection. So uh, if you've seen our other videos, you know that we almost always run a 9118 rear tire on a Suron. And the reason is it fits great inside of a factory swing arm and it's a lightweight tire. Now, if we go up to a 100-118 like this Shinko we have here, I'm going to gain about another inch or so clearance just by changing out my tire. Alright, goal number two is to stop the overheating that I've had on this bike. If you didn't know this already, Charge Cycle Works is now a KO dealer, so we now sell the KO products. We're hopeful that the KO motor is capable of handling the power outputs that we want out of this bike without overheating. So this is our solution to overheating. All right, goal number three is just overall geometry and handling of this bike. By raising the rear end of this bike about an inch and a half, that's gonna give us enough clearance to, to slide the fork tubes down about a half inch to give us enough clearance to fit that 21 inch tire in there and give us additional clearance to adjust the fork to the correct geometry. Doing all this, we can finally get 1821s back on this bike, which will make it great for its high speed capabilities, riding motocross tracks, desert, all the terrain that we ride out here in Utah. So one of the dirty secrets about putting these 85 forks on here is how much it upsets the geometry of these bikes. On a motocross bike, you'll notice that there's usually three lines here engraved into the fork. And those lines are there for a reason. There's three millimeters separating each line, which is a total of about nine millimeters of adjustability up and down. And so normally the manufacturer will set it in the middle. And when you are racing and you're on a high speed track, you're gonna lower the forks, which raises the front end by three millimeters which will give you your bike a little bit better stability at high speeds. Now, when you go race a track that's tight and technical and you want better turning, you're gonna lower that fork down minus three millimeters to get that tighter turning. So we're talking about moving the fork three, six, maybe nine millimeters at the most. And when we're installing things like lift linkages into the rear end or these forks, we're not moving at millimeters, we're moving at inches, and that's a gigantic problem with how the bike handles, and that's one of our goals to fix in this project. Stay tuned for our next video where we're going to build the bike, and you're going to see the end result and how this all turns out. Are we going to be able to accomplish all three goals? Let's find out.